All right. Uh, so not quite two yet. So, but um, if you guys want to start asking questions, go ahead. Um, I'm going to share my desktop here. Can everybody see my desktop? Give me a thumbs up or a yes. All uh, right, so we got a few people here. For people that just joined, if you guys can um, figure out how to find your um, uh, reactions, um, that's a good way for me to get feedback. So I'll be asking you things to give me a, a yes or no, uh, whether you want me to proceed or not at times. So um, things like a, a yes or no. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. We've got quite a few joining here now. Um, all right, so my main purpose today is to pretty much go over uh, kind of assignment one, see if I can give any help for people on doing that. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I mean, I, I did post a couple announcements. I, I got quiz one returned back. Um, um, if you don't know how to find the submission reviews, uh, you should try and figure that out so you, you can see what the expected answers were. Sometimes I give feedback on those. So. Um, if I, I believe that, um, let's look at this as this should show me how you guys would see it. Um, I believe one way to do it is if you go to your quizzes and like look at the quiz one. So if you want to go back and look at kind of feedback and stuff and the correct answers, there should be like a little pull down here, which allows you to, or you might have to go to the submissions, I don't know. Um, and that allows you to, to, somewhere in there, allows you to uh, see the report. I don't think I took the quiz there, so hopefully you guys will see it. Um, um, all right, there was that, the quiz one. Um, I have been giving feedback for, uh, yeah, that was it, I guess. I have been giving feedback to the people who have been working on the assignment one. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, if you haven't completed the practice assignment yet, and uh, a lot of people have, which is great. So uh, almost everybody has at least accepted the practice assignment, except for one person, which I think may be dropped in the class, but otherwise everybody, uh, but I don't think everybody's quite com completed the practice assignment. So, um, I mean, you know, uh, it would be better if you had completed the practice assignment uh, and you're watching this to, to get more out of it, but um, you're certainly welcome to stay. Uh, but, but yeah, I am going to go over assignment one, okay? So uh, as usual, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start my dev box. So just as a reminder, uh, I, I've got my dev boxes in a subdirectory called boxes instead of repos. So you, you guys, if you follow my instructions, probably have it in repos instead. But you have to change to your directory with your dev box repository, right? Um, and uh, do a vagrant up. Uh, always a good idea to confirm that you're seeing uh, that the port 8080 is being forwarded. Um, your dev box won't be completely up until you get your prompt back here. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I did the wrong one there. <laughs> uh, it's not the box I wanted. Uh, I'll try that again. All right. Um, so change into your directory. Um, oh, shoot, don't I have a box created here? Um, Oh, 
Oh, I do have it in repo. Sorry. So um, I did do this one in repo, so it would match. There you go. That's what I was looking for. So change in your dev box repository to a bigger up. Um, if you get a warning about a newer version, you can pretty much like ignore that. Um, I mean, you know, um, if I was worried about stuff, I would upgrade my 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 base box, but um, um, it won't affect um, our class here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, do look that the, the port 8080 is forwarding. Oh, there was one thing, although I, I guess most people must have gotten past it, but um, um, it turns out that there was a, a problem uh, a configuration problem for Windows host. So if you did have a Windows host and you're still working on getting your dev box up, which I, it, it seems to me that most everybody has gotten their dev box up or at least has gotten some way of, of doing something. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, you did have to maybe do this by hand. I should have it fixed for future assignments. So hopefully you won't run into this even if you're on a Windows host. But um, if you did see a message about, um, protocol error when you tried to do the configure, um, you might have to copy these by hand or just delete your assignment zero, zero and restart it. So uh, sorry about that. I know that affected a few people. Um, yeah, so if your dev box is up, um, you know, look for your port 8080 and then I'm gonna connect to it. So it's that local host on port 8080 or 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. <coughs> and you should see it there. So I still got my assignment 00. So yeah, we wanna work on assignment 01. So let's uh, close that. Uh, how do you close a folder here? It's um, under file. Yeah, there's close folder, control KF. And let's do the, the things from scratch. So, you know, the the um, the normal procedure. So you should pretty much have all your stuff set up. Um, so somebody's asking about uh, issues. You don't see task one, task two, like in the video, you have to create those. So I'll get to that point in a second here for um, assignment one here. So you'll see me creating those, but you do have to create the issues by hand. They won't be uh, the, 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 yeah, the issues by hand, they won't be created for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the steps to, to, to accept the assignment one and, and configure it. So if we go find our assignment one under unit one, there should be an invitation link. Let's make certain it's working. I'm pretty certain it's working because some a lot of people are already working on assignment one. One or two groups or people have got it completed or almost it looks like. I did give a lot of feedback to, to, to people already. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to create a new group here called TMUC student team. Do not use the TMUC student team or opt to kick you off. I had a few people do that for the practice sign. That's fine. But um, this is a team of one myself here. And we'll accept it. Um, and it shouldn't take too long usually to create those. So if you just refresh pretty quickly, you should get your assignment link. These should show up on your GitHub um, repository. So if, like if you go to your main GitHub account, um, you should see your team. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that maybe you won't see these um, unless you go to the COSC 2336 organization, just to, in case you're curious. Um, So um, yeah, this repository is just my profile repository. But yeah, so I think basically what happens when you accept the assignment, it creates a repository for you, but it's actually owned by my the, the CLSC 2336 organization, right? So, so you should see them up here if you're curious, right? All the repositories in the organization. Of course, you only see the ones that you're a, a team member of. So you should only see yours and not other team repositories. So you don't have access to be able to see other students work, right? 
the only way, yeah, I mean, right, if, if you lose kind of that link, that's, that's how you go back and find it again, All right? Um, so I should always have the, these kind of pre-configuration steps. So you always uh, have to do these when you're starting a new assignment, accept the assignment, clone the repository. So let's do that. So we'll go over here, make certain you clone it using the SSH uh, URL. I'll just copy that. Uh, we'll do clone repository under the source code, paste that in there, hit return. Uh, and you should do it, you should clone it locally into your sync assignment directory. So now, you know, you should have your assignment zero, zero. Uh, uh, sorry about breaking up. So maybe I'll try and talk a little bit slower, but um, um, I don't know if I can turn my mic up a bit, maybe. Um, so uh, oh, uh, I'm going to have to add my key here. Uh, give me one second here. Let, let me just check my mic a bit. But but yeah, I mean, you know, that these we might have difficulty. So I'm at a different location. I might not have a lot of bandwidth. So uh, give me one second. I'll just check something here, maybe. Um, Okay, um, yeah, I've got it as loud as I can get it. So um, yeah, I'll try and maybe slow it down a little bit. So um, so where was, oh yeah, I, I, um, uh, I probably have to redo my key here. Um, uh, I guess I'll show that. So you shouldn't normally have to do this, uh, but I, I kind of switching around my dev boxes and stuff. So uh, let me check that I got my, public private key set up here and get that again. So I'll copy my public key. Go back to my GitHub settings here. So as you can tell, my bandwidth isn't too good. Maybe I should do these at, at, at campus anyway. Although our, um, I had an announcement, our first um, session, the um, recording failed basically because of the connection issues we were having at um, campus. Um, so. Yeah, I didn't have my key in here yet. So let's get that in there. Oops. All right, uh, let's try that again. So maybe that'll be better now. So let's copy our URL, paste it to try again have it cloned down into the sync assignments subdirectory. You shouldn't have to add the, the SSH key only once. Um, I'm doing, I had to add it there because I'm kind of switching between different dev boxes I've got on my laptop and desktop and other places. So I hadn't added it yet for my, for the system here. So. But yeah, you should only have to do that once if you're if you're using the same dev box and with the with the 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 public key that you've added. So. Um, all right. As you can see, my connect my bandwidth connection looks kind of bad today, so it's taking some time to clone this here. So, hum dum dum dum. Um, but uh, oh yeah, so while that's doing that, so somebody did ask about issues. So you do always have to create your issues by hand. So I think that's like our third step here. So I can go ahead and, and get started on that. Um, if you go to your issues 
and um, say new issue. You should have templates for each one of the tasks that you have to do for each of the assignments. And kind of like I said before, I usually just go ahead and if I could have created these for you, I probably would have done that, but um, it doesn't seem to be possible with the, this GitHub classroom. So, so you just have to do this. Um, so check, so, so select the issue template and um, uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, and then I'll do issue task two, new issue, task two template. So if you have a repository not found, um, that is, um, uh, let me, let me um, kind of show you again. So, I mean, first of all, make certain that uh, you have the right, make certain that you have, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do anything about the sound quality. It's probably the bandwidth, sorry about that. So make certain that you do have the right repository Um, so the way to do that for your repositories um, is to go to your repositories. You won't see it show up here. You'll have to go to the, the COSC 2336 organization. And you should find it there. If you don't find it here, then something's wrong. You haven't accepted the correct assignment yet or whatever. And then once you get into your assignment, um, so let's continue creating these issues here. But once you get into your repository, make certain that you copy that um, to clone, right? And then that should, you know, so if, if you have a message about, um, um, that I can't find it here, um, you know, you got to check that. You got to check that you're copying the, the right URL to, to clone in there. So, uh, okay, I can go ahead and open that repository. If you missed the chance to open the repository, you can always then, once you've cloned it, you can always open your folder um, uh, for the assignment. Okay, there I've got assignment one open. So, um, so let, me, let me finish creating these tasks in assignment one real quickly. The task three. And task four. And finally, task five. Yeah, my bandwidth is being pretty bad today. Um, it's being very slow. So let's get task five and then we're done with those. And I'm gonna start working on task one. So let's go ahead and ask, add task one, um, link it to our pull request so we can begin working on it. All right, there. Um, so, I mean, that should pop up after a bit here. But again, I'm I'm really having some slow, some internet is issues here. It looks like so. Um, so it kind of went through showing you again accepting the assignment. We cloned the repository. 
Um, um, I, I just created the, the issues here, step five. Uh, so don't forget to do the configure task. This was the task that uh, some people had that error message on. Um, so to do that, as you recall, we have to open up a terminal and run configure. So that's dot slash configure. You, you do have to do this step each time, um, the first time when you start working on an assignment. Um, you should see, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the it won't have to re-download stuff because if you've already done it configured for uh, assignment zero zero. So if, if you don't see the uh, the, the template tasks, uh, people are asking me on direct message. You guys, I mean, th these things are of general interest to people. So you can ask these on the, the general. You don't, you don't have to make these private messages, I don't think. I mean, you know, you, you can make a judgment call, but that's, uh, if you don't see the, the templates for the, the task under the issues, um, something's wrong with your repository. So, you know, um, maybe we'll have to um, um, uh, check that uh, offline. Um, I, I'll take a look at your repository uh, later on here uh, in person, uh, see if I can see what's going on. So, um, yeah, one thing I'll say again for Windows users, um, if you do that configure, if you do an ls-alh, um, you should see that there's a .vs code, and it's not going to be a, an L, a symbolic link anymore. So I, I fixed this by actually just copying these. So you should have .vs code in a .clang format and, instead of symbolic links um, after you configure there. So this is what it should look like correctly. So. Um, all right, um, we're pretty much done setting up. Uh, let's just confirm that the project builds and runs, right? So again, I could do this from the command line. So just to show you again, these are all, if you do a make help, these are all the targets that you can do for our make build system. Um, so it's always a good idea to do a, everything cleanly from scratch. So do a make clean, make all, um, and then make tests just to confirm that everything builds and the tests run for the assignment before you start. And they should always uh, run right after you download them. Make all make tests, all right? Uh, but again, there are keyboard shortcuts for these. So you can, um, you can also do those from within Visual Studio. Uh, I'm not certain if you have to have anything open or not in the editor. So Control Shift 1 should do a make all, but yeah, you might have to have uh, like, like an actual follow up. It's only open up the, uh, the test for this assignment. So let's now try control shift one, um, should do a make clean, control shift two or control shift B to build, um, should do that, should build everything. And then control shift three, should run the test. Okay, again, uh, in this assignment, there are no tests uncommented. So what you expect um, is um, uh, no tests ran here. So, so somebody asks, uh, they have an error with all of the check in the test lib stats.cpp. Um, so uh, of course, if uh, I mean, I assume that means you've uncommented something, right? Uh, because I mean, if nothing's uncommented, there's no checks yet. Uh, as soon as you uncomment these, uh, of course. Uh, so 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 like for the practice assignment, as soon as you uncomment these, uh, oh, one thing uh, I did have at least one or two groups for some reason your formatting isn't working correctly. So uh, when you do a save, it is supposed to uh, reformat your code using the the, the class style guidelines. So notice it, it reformatted um, and, and lined up everything correctly. Uh, so you might want to check that. Um, so sorry about the aside. So uh, so I gave a comment to some people. Uh, you can't always run the formatter by hand by using make format. Uh, you know you should see this run. If this doesn't run, let me know. Um, the other thing to check is on your settings. Um, If you look for like format on save, um, um, I think 
it should be set on your workspace. Yeah, so that that's one of the things that gets set in, in the .vs code setting. So you should find that there's check to format on save. The only th other thing I can think of is that by default, um, and I, it, sometimes uh, when you make changes, um, uh, th there's like an auto save uh, on Visual Studio Code. Uh, I usually have that turned off. Um, I guess I can have it on after, after a delay. Um, but um, um, because, um, yeah, the delay is supposed to be a second. So, so I'm not certain if people are just never explicitly saving. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, the format on save is never being done because maybe it doesn't do it on an auto save. That's, that's the only other thing I could really think of. So if that's the case, if I was complaining about your code formatting, you might want to just turn that off and then make certain that you're explicitly hitting control S, you know, because again, um, the, the code style checker is in there to be, you know, enforcing that, that you've got good um, formatting of your code spaces uh, um, um, and things. So, you know, if you do a control save, it should run it, you know, put your opening calling curly braces where they should go, make certain that your spacing is correct, only one white space around things, one white space after comma, stuff like that. So, um, okay, so back, sorry, sorry for the size. So back to that, if, once you uncomment those, you should expect it's not gonna build like we did for the practice assignment uh, because um, we are now have code, um, um, trying to test the sum of values, but that's the first task, right? So uh, as usual, um, so at this point, you know, I'm maybe going to, well, I will give you this one, um, and that, this will probably be the last one that I'll give you. So for the sum of tasks, if you read the assignment, um, you know, so you have to figure out what this function signature is, because we have to add the, 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 the prototype or the signature to the header file, and a stub function like you did for the practice assignment to get it back to it so it's compiling, right? Um, so the sum of values will take an array of double values um, and sum up all those values. Um, and, the re and, and, and this is a value returning function. So unlike in my videos today, this function is not a void function. It actually returns a double, which is the sum of the values in the array that you pass in as a parameter, right? Um, and as I mentioned here as well, uh, here on the note, uh, the, the, the array should be declared as a constant parameter. So I talked about that in my video about arrays, okay? So in this case, we're passing in an array of doubles that we need to sum, or you should be, but we're not gonna actually be changing any value. So, so um, since arrays are passed in by reference, by default, but we wanna make it just, um, um, uh, you know, an input parameter. We want to guarantee that we won't actually change the values of this array. You need to declare this this parameter constant. If you don't, I will. That's one of the things I'm going to be checking for assignment zero zero. I think it'll compile if you don't do this. But um, 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 I will create a new issue for you and make you correct that if if you don't uh, uh, specify this correctly. Okay. So what that means, you know, again, um, uh, we need to add our header like we did for the practice assignment. So we've got a function called sum of values, right? So that's the name. This is gonna be just a prototype. So we just have the, the semicolon at the end. So this is just how you call the function. So what it takes as input and what it returns as a result and the name of it, right? So where already mentioned it. This is a value returning function that returns a double. Um, so notice if, if I have lots of multiple spaces here, if I hit control S, um, it should correct that by running the code formatter. Should only be one space between there, not multiple spaces. Um, and it takes two input parameters, uh, like for my practice, or like for the, the videos about arrays um, and the, uh, the example code that I have in, um, I'm not gonna open that up, but the example of code I have in our, uh, code examples repository. So um, it takes the size, which is the number of values in the array, um, and then it takes the array of doubles itself, okay? And this is what I was talking about. This should be a constant parameter. 
Oops, so something like that, right? So that's the correct function signature in order to call that. So this is enough so that if I recompile, the, the, the compiler will, will know how to, you know, since I'm including libstats.hpp header file, uh, the compiler will be satisfied. Okay, so somebody's trying to call some of values. It looks like it has two parameters, like an integer and a double. Okay, the header file tells me that that somebody's going to implement a function called sum of values that takes an integer and a double and returns a double as a result. So I can compile this file now if I do Control Shift Two. So you see, it compiles test lib stats, but when it tries to link things together, the linker complains. It says, "Whoops." somebody's trying to call a function called sum of values, but nobody actually implemented that, right? So we're still not actually back to a compilable state. My, my tests aren't running. I can't run the test because uh, we didn't link anything. If you try to do control shift three, um, uh, it will try and remake, but it won't run the test because uh, uh, we haven't successfully built yet here, right? So anyway, um, let's add a stub function like I told you to do. So like, like here, we're expecting zero for the first test case. So let's, let's return zero, so, or approximately zero um, for our first test case. So if, if you sum an array that has no values, the result, result should be zero is what this test is telling me, right? So the implementations always go in um, the source, in this case, uh, called our libstats.cpp. Uh, the signature of the function is the same. So I always copy and paste. Um, and if I didn't catch this on your practice assignment, remove these meta comments. So it said write your implementation here. So you shouldn't leave that in to your actual final code that you submit. Uh, but now we're going to do the implementation. So we don't have the semicolon. This isn't a just a function prototype. This is our implementation. We've got open and cold, closing curly braces. But make a, make a stub. Uh, so if we return zero, this should make at least the first test happy because that's what it expects, zero. So control S. Now if we build... So hopefully this fixes the, the, the problem that uh, Mr. Gerald was asking me about. Um, so, so once you get your prototype uh, and a stub, we should build uh, these, these clock skews, I've, I, I, they should be harmless. Um, I get these occasionally. I'm tr still trying to figure out the way to correct those, but I don't think they should cause anybody problems if you see those. So. Um, and let's run the test. So now, I mean, the tests aren't passing, but they are running, okay? And you always, always, always strive to get your code, keep your code in the state where you can run the test. That's when you can make progress on actually implementing things. All right. Uh, so yeah, now if you scroll back up to the top of your test, uh, you'll find that the first failing test is 45. So it is passing this one on 39. All right, but um, you know, if we pass an array with a single value, um, the sum of that array with a single value three should be three. Um, that's what this test is saying, right? And and we're returning zero in our sub function, so of course it fails, right? So as I as I mentioned to some people, then you know the implementation of your function here is going to look pretty similar to my video about arrays. I mean, you need a for loop. Um, and you need to just sum up all the values of the array, taking case of this, taking care of the special case. So if I give you an array of size zero, you know, you should be returning zero as the result. So your loop shouldn't run in that case, right? Uh, but in this case, it's a value returning function. So you need to have a return statement in there somewhere uh, that returns the sum that you calculate of, of all the values in the array. So if you have an, if you have an array with two values, 3.5 and 5.2, the sum of that is 8.7, right? So that's what your function should calculate to do that. All right, questions, so that makes sense. Did that fix um, your issue with the, uh, the errors for the check, Mr. Gerald? Okay. 
But yeah, that's always the general step. And that was what you were supposed to be doing in the practice for the assignment zero, zero. So initially, you know, when you uncomment these tasks to actually get them to compile and run the tests, um, when, when you uncomment these task tests, you do have to uh, do a preliminary thing, get your, your, your prototype into the header file um, and get a um, stub implementation and then check a check that it tests uh, that, that it compiles uh, and your tests run um, and are failing and then start working on the task all right did i link my task to assignment one here um i thought i tried to do that oh there it is yeah so I'll be looking for that. So, all right, questions about step one. I kind of want some thumbs up or yes if uh, people want me to go on and talk about step two. I'm probably not going to be giving you any more code, um, but uh, I, I can certainly talk about uh, the rest of the functions here. Um, so um, get with me after I stop here, um, and I will look at your repo repository in private. Um, and see why you, you don't see your issues here. So, um, to tell you the truth, the I mean, you know, the issue. Th this is more. Uh, this is something that actually won't affect your um, uh, working on the tasks if you miss these. Although I will, if you do miss creating the task and and linking them, um, I probably won't accept your pull request until you do that. This is just more of a common thing. So this is the way that people who are working on on project GitHub projects or any kind of repository like this, this is how you sign, assign and keep track of work being done, right? So somebody um, will create the task, other people will accept the task. And if you're working on a multi-group um, project, it's a good idea to uh, actually maybe divvy these up and, and assign um, the, the, the tasks to particular people as well. I mean, again, it's just more for practice. Uh, but um, but yeah, if this, if this particular member is going to um, work on the, a task, uh, you know, we can assign them to it, that kind of thing. So, uh, and as a reminder, as I told some people for some of the groups with uh, multiple members, uh, multiple team members, uh, every team member has to contribute. So every team member has to have your dev box working. And basically, I have to see, you know, so at a minimum, since there's five tasks for assignment one, you're going to have to have five commits showing up in your feedback pull request and all five tasks. Well, um, you know, every every, every um, team member, if you have multiple members on your team, has to be doing commits and you have to be doing roughly equal. OK, so for a team with two members, two members have to be committing uh, at least two of your commits and then the, the 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 third member commits the last one right you can divvy those up however you want right five is a minimum and in fact actually it, it's a good sign of, of people taking the thing seriously if you a lot of these tasks um, will be more will be complicated enough that there are kind of sub goals right so it would be a good one once you get like part one of a task working to commit your code that gets part one done right so in that case you'll have more commits than the tasks. Um, all right. Um, did I get, uh, yes, can I move on to task two here? Or does anybody have a question, want to stop me before I talk a little bit about task two? OK. So there's five tasks, you have to implement five functions for the assignment. Calculate me. Um, I believe that this function, if I remember, I has the same signature that we just did uh, for the sum of values. Um, 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 so yeah, the function should take a constant array of doubles 
and it has to return a double as the result. So it basically has the same function. Okay, so someone asked if you're working as a team, do we each have to do the task one five? No, I mean, um, um, there's only gotta be one commit to your team repository for task one. One member has to take responsibility for doing the implementation in their debt backs of task one and then pushing that commit for task one, at least, right, at a minimum. Now, the way that teams need to collaborate after the, the member pushes task one, like if, if, you're, uh, if, if another team member is then gonna work on task two, you have that, that team member has to do a poll. So if you do a poll or a refresh, you should get the commit that, that your team member just did pulled down. You'll, so you'll see what they did to implement task one, and then you can start safely working on task two from that point on, all right? But yeah, I mean, each, each team member is, uh, each commit is only gonna be done by one team member and you only need, you know, there's a minimum, but, but you know, you need at least one commit for task one, Sure. One commit for task two. You can have more, but but you need at least one. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So so this calculated mean will have the same signature. The the name changes, but it looks the the has the same signature. So that's a good start for some of values, right? Uh, again, you you can you can um, look at the tests. I'll just uncomment my second set of tests. So notice calculate mean. Again, it takes two parameters input, the size of the array and, and the array of doubles. And it returns a double that we test against um, um, with, with the check here, right? Um, I'm not testing uh, for an array of size zero here because um, it's nonsensical uh, to ask what the mean is of no values. It's kind of like a null, so I don't test that. But, but yeah, I mean the the the, the mean uh, or the the uh, the average of a list of values that only has one value is that value itself. So that's kind of what the first test is doing. So anyway, when you write your sub function, you could return three point one to get your first test to pass, right? Um, Oh, um, but there was a requirement on this, so 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 you know, pay attention to the requirements. Um, you're required to reuse the sum of values, right? So, mathematically, um, um, oh yeah. So here's one one place where you might want to read the PDF. So so you won't see this this um, uh, rendered uh, in here or in your markdown. Uh, did I mention this before? I mean. Um, this is just in general good to know, you know. So um, your README is a Markdown file. So it's a Markdown is like HTML markup. It, it's a markup language. So we use symbols for things like level one headers, bullet point lists, um, uh, code segments, and things like that. Uh, you can render this markup in um, uh, Visual Studio Code. So this this is how a lot most people um, document their projects, you know, so that's the, the readme.md file is directly rendered um, as the description here when you bring up your repository. Um, and you can kind of render this, this is the same as like rendering HTML to an actual web page. Um, so the command is like control shift V um, or you can like right click on this and look it up. Um, so uh, there it is, open preview. We'll open the preview of, of, of the readme. So again, this is kind of rendering it. So you know, again, here's how our level one headers are rendered. Here's how the code fragments are rendered, and so on. Unfortunately, uh, this one doesn't render the the LaTeX mark markdown. So uh, yeah, if you want to see the PDF, uh, you do have to have um, the um, you know your 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 shared folder being mounted correctly. Um, so let me open up. Um, Uh, let me open up like a file browser. So, you know, if, if you go to your host system and open up your normal file browser that you use, you should be able to find those PDFs. If you, uh, um, unfortunately, as far as I know, if anybody, if anybody finds out differently, but as far as I know, there's no good PDF renderer that, for Visual Studio Code. I, I've seen some extensions that claim to do that, but I've never gotten one that works very well. So, um, but yeah, so I usually just, 
go to my host system and navigate to um, um, your assignment. Um, and you should find it. Uh, it'll be uh, a PDF should be created under the doc folder for the assignment, right? So again, I mean, you know, if you prefer PDF, you could read this from here. And in this case, if you really do want to see the, the math markdown, you do have to, to pull up the PDF um, file. So. So in this case, you know, I'm, I'm assuming a little bit that you're familiar with what an average is. So if you don't want, know what the uh, notation means here, basically you have to sum up all the values in the array and then divide by the number of values. And that's what the average is, okay? If, if you don't know, uh, at some point uh, you, you should take a, a class in discrete math as like a computer science major, or at least uh, be a good class to take. Right. Um, so this is an example of a discrete uh, uh, summation here. Uh, so anyway, uh, that, that's sorry for the aside, but um, what that comes down to is um, Um, I'm re requiring you to reuse the sum of values. So the sum of values does the summation that I just talked about. The sum, of, the, the sum of values sums up all the values in an array and returns that as a result. So once you call sum of values, uh, then all you have to do is divide by n, right? Um, and in this case, you know what the size is because that's passed in as the first parameter. Right, so, so the, si the the number of, of values in the array that you have to calculate the mean of is the first parameter that's given to you in your function called calculate mean. Right, so you just have to divide by that. So that's calculate mean. I think that's all I can say. Any, any questions about calculate mean here? All right, moving on. Um, so task three, um, you have to add a function called difference of values. This one has a different, slightly different signature than the first two. Um, so if we look closely, I'll just look at the tests here. Um, so when we call it, we call it with three values and, and we don't return a result, okay? So, so notice we're not, checking or testing the difference of values directly in the test anymore. We call it and then we check something in values array. Right? So anyway, the, the, the things that you pass into difference of values is again, the size of the array, number of values and the array itself. So that's the same, but then you pass in a different, okay? Um, can you elaborate? Somebody asked a question. You have to put the formula into libstats at HPP. Um, I, I mean, I guess kind of the um, um, like for calculating mean, this is kind of the math mathematical formula. So you implement that. So for task two, the um, um, the the calculate mean, you're implementing calculating the mean, right? So, so your actual implementation. So, so what, go, what goes in the header file is not the implementation, but the header file, you know, so you asked about the HPP. So, so you know, to be precise here or correct, the implementation doesn't go there. That is just the, the declaration of the signature of the function, okay? Uh, but, but yeah, so, so when you get to implementing your calculate mean, um, which is the second function you're supposed to do, the second task, that implements the, um, the formula, basically, the mean formula. And the way you implement that is you sum the values first by calling the sum of values. So you are required to reuse the sum of values. Then you divide by n, and that should be the result. That, that should be the mean value, right? And that should be what you return as a result of calculating the mean. But, but that, imp implements the, um, that implements the formula for the mean, okay. Uh, all right, so difference of values takes uh, three things and it's a void function. It doesn't return a result, okay? So we talked about void functions in our videos um, for this unit. 
um, a little bit when we reviewed functions, right? So, so functions can return a value, but they don't have to. If they don't return a value, they should be void functions, right? So what difference of values is supposed to be doing is it's supposed to be taking an array of values and subtracting the third uh, result from it here. So, okay, but uh, in this case, unlike calculate mean, um, I do test for if you pass in an array that you claim has no values, the size is zero. So notice that that the size is supposedly zero. So nothing is supposed to happen in that case because it, your, your, your function should treat that as an empty array of doubles, right? But, um, so, but here, this, this might make more sense. So that's why it's still 3.1 after we return. But um, if, if you give it an array with one value and you say that the different, then this is what you're supposed to subtract from everything. So 3.1 minus 1.5 is 1.6, okay? And um, you're supposed to put the result for each subtraction back into the array of values, right? And since arrays are passed in by reference, if we just assign the result of the subtraction back into your array, um, the results will be available back um, in the test here after you return from calling the difference of values. Okay? So basically, that's what's happened here. So, so after we subtract 1.5, from 3.1, the result is 1.6 at index zero, right? And that's what we're testing here. After, if we call it with two values and subtract 1.5, we should get 1.6 at index zero, and we should get three, negative 3.1 minus 1.5 is negative 4.6 at index one, okay? That's what difference of values does. And it, it, so it doesn't return an explicit result, but it's returning an implicit result, right? So all of the results of subtracting the values are returned back in the array that we passed in, since we're passing it in by reference. Uh, yeah, and this time uh, there is one, an, another difference on the signature, the, the, the array can't be constant, right? Because again, we're actually modifying that array and we're expecting that the, mod that the array is modified. So after we return from this, the values in the array are different from what they were before we called it, right? So it's not constant. It's not a constant parameter anymore. All right, good questions. Can I move on? Yeses or thumbs up? Or is there a question about task two or task one? This is what I'm usually going to be doing on Monday and Wednesdays. So, you know, I won't write the code for you and I might not even get you started. So at this point, now that you see what I mean by figuring out the function signature, you know, the function prototype from kind of the description, that's always your first thing to do for these tasks. So, so. all right, let's move on because uh, I'm going to wrap up here in, in four or five minutes. So uh, that was task three. Task four. Um, um, is square values. This is similar to task three um, in that you're passing in an array and it's going to be a void function. Um, so here's our test for task four. Um, so we pass an array. Of, of we, only, we only pass in two values, but basically, what you need to and it's a void function, right? So, so, and it's it's not a constant parameter because we're modifying the values in place of the array that you pass in by reference. Uh, in this case, you just you should just square the the um, the values that are given. Okay, so so again, for the first test, we pass in array of size zero, so nothing should happen. But if you square three point one, the result is nine point six one. Right, so after we square the one value, that's the result we get. And if you square the negative 3.1, the value is, is 9.61 positive for in both cases, right? Uh, so that's your square of values function. Uh, you are required, so we talked a little bit about reuse uh, in functions. When I talked about reviewing functions, you are required to use the math library pow function. Uh, that should have already been included for you, I believe. Uh, if I didn't include that, um, um, 
Um, I probably should have actually left that out. So to use POW, you actually have to include CMath. Uh, I probably already included that for you, right? But if you want to use a library that's in like the standard C library, uh, you have to find out which library it's in and include the correct header, right? That's the same thing that you're doing when you add functions to libstats. So in, in order to call these functions that you're implementing, um, we actually have to include libstats uh, in any code where we want to call those functions that you implement. Um, that's what it means to, you know, declare a library like a header uh, that so I can include it in uh, some other file uh, and reuse those functions. Okay? We talked a little bit about that. That's that's the main thing. That's why you have functions in programming languages. You want to be able to reuse code, not have to, to reinvent the wheel all the time. So, so you want uh, the languages you use to, to provide libraries for you so you can just reuse the functions. And you want to write your own libraries so that I can reuse the functions in multiple places. All right, so that was Square questions. All right, uh, get with me afterwards or you can hang around. Um, um, all right, so let's wrap up. So the, the, the task five is gonna be the most complicated because of, I mean, you could calculate standard deviation by hand, kind of like we did mean, but I'm requiring you to reuse all your functions. So part of this assignment one was to emphasize this idea of, the, of reuse of functions. So writing functions, you do it, to reuse things, okay? So to calculate the, the, the standard deviation, uh, you can just reuse all the functions that um, you wrote for the first five tasks here. Um, all right, so how can you do that? Well, uh, again, I'll kind of refer back to the mathematical. This is the, the mathematical expression for a standard deviation. The standard deviation is you first have to sum up the squares of the differences, okay? So we're going to use the difference function to calculate the difference between every value and the mean of the values in the array. We're going to use the, the mean function to, to first calculate the mean of the values in the original array and find the difference between each item in the array and its mean. Then we're going to use the, 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 the squares function to um, um, calculate the squares of those differences, right? Then we're going to use your the, the the sum of values a second time to sum up those squared differences, uh, and then once you do all that, you just have to divide by the size of the array again, and and take the square root. So you have to reuse the square root function from the CMath library, right? Uh, and then putting that all together, that gives you the standard deviation. All right. So as I describe it here, you start off by calling calculate mean to find the mean, right? Then you reuse the difference of values to find the difference of the values in the array from the mean. So, so you're gonna be using the, the mean value from calculate mean to, 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 to get the difference. The result of that will be, it will modify the original array. So, so instead of having the original values, you, you'll have the difference of each value from the mean, right? Then you will we'll call your square of values. Uh, that will ca calculate the square of the differences of all the values. Then you'll calculate, then you'll call calculate mean again, right? But now your, your array has the, the, the square of the differences, right? So now you'll have the sum of the squared differences. And then the final result is you have to divide by n and take the square root from the CMath library. And that should be the result. That should be the standard deviation. All right, so that's it then. Um, what you need to do for assignment one. Any last kind of questions on this before I break out for individuals here? So like I was saying, this is basically what I'm gonna be doing on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, so on Wednesday, we'll go over assignment two like this. Um, and I'll let you ask questions, I'll discuss it. So it'll be good to actually have started on assignment two before 11 on Wednesday. Um, so you kind of know what these functions are, at least get started on it and have a lay of the land. So. 
All right. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll ask, or, or maybe, um, yes. So, so I'm going to, uh, anybody that, that wants to ask a question, um, I think um, I'm going to, um, um, I'm going to end this session so I can get a clean recording. And I'm going to start a new one. So if you want to log back on and ask a, a particular question, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Tamong. I'm going to look at his repository first. But if there's others, I wasn't certain if others were looking for a specific thing. So maybe come back after I end the session. All right. So I'm going to end this. I'm going to, I think I got a good video this time. So I'll post this recording as well. So, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to post this. There'll be a new YouTube um, playlist that only has the um, that only has the hackathons help sessions, uh, and I will post that on the additional um, uh, resources in my Leo online, and announce it probably too. So, of course, it'll take a little while to get it uploaded and everything. So, all right, so that's it for this session.